Hello crafters, Raquel here with Paints and Glitter. I'm just coming along to share with you the decorative Christmas bobble die set from Tonic Studios. This has been a super popular set. It does come with 36 dies and it is similar to the one that was made available through the Tonic Studios craft kit this month. However, the difference is that this does make a larger bobble and right now you can also get it together as a bundle with this gorgeous star die set that is available as well from Tonic Studios. This was super popular during birthday week, sold out and they brought it back. So if you want to get your hands on this bundle, I highly suggest you run over to Tonic Studios. I'll leave links down below so that you can pick that up. And the first thing that I'm going to do is let you know, of course, this does come with instructions, but it's always fun to either follow along with a different crafter, get some ideas, but the first thing that I want to do is show you how many pieces you will need to actually assemble this bauble or Christmas ornament as we call them here in the U.S. So the first thing you're going to need are four large hexagons like this. I'm using 80 pound cardstock and some of it I have actually sprayed with this gorgeous sparkle spray from Tonic Studios. This happens to be in cream gold. It's my all-time favorite and I use it here and there but here's the result of this just on red cardstock. You get this gorgeous shimmer and it is available in different colors so it's not just in gold but if you like that sort of thing, then it's a fun way to jazz up your projects. Now, you see this piece here? You're going to need a total of eight of these. And of course, you'll be able to cut that out with your die set. Then you have the option of different types of layers. So here is one of three different pieces that you get to choose from. So let me just show you that very quickly. So here's that hexagon I mentioned. Here's the red piece that I just showed you. And then on here, you're going to see three different panels that you get to choose from. The first thing that I want to point out is the edge. So there are two different types of edge dies. If you use them all on their own, you're going to get something like this. So you get a solid piece. It has a little stippling on the edge. Or if you go with the other option, you'll get a solid piece with no stippling on the edge and it's slightly narrower or smaller than the one that does have that stippling. So that's the difference there. However, you can join those with the other decorative pieces. And for instance here, I've used all in one kind of design there. That's what that looks like. It's absolutely stunning. And of course I've used Mirror Card, which you can get. The Glorious Greens collection is what I've used. And by the way, that's a beautiful set of six by six papers. Let me show you that really quick. That's this collection here. Comes with different types of mirror card, satin card, and if you wanna know how many you would need, for instance, to decorate the outside of one of these large baubles, you can definitely use either one piece of the six by six card to create some of the panels, or you can use two and kind of add a little variety there. So it's really up to you. Now here's another one. And I wanted to show you, this one has the little stars. So let me just show you against that background. It has little stars in the design. And then again, you can either cut it out with that simple border, or you can certainly cut it out with the stippled border. And that's just a matter of changing that border die. It's up to you. The one thing you want to prevent is those dies overlapping. So I always suggest Cut the outside border first. When you're done with all of that cutting, then go back and add in that Verso die. That way you don't damage your dies in the event that it slips on the uh, die cutting surface. So there's another element of this bobble that's different from the one in the kit. And that's this adorable bow among other items that I'm gonna show you. But that one also has layering pieces. So these are going to go right on the little tails here and the bow itself. So it comes with all of that and it also comes with a little piece for the center that you can use to kind of that little loop in the center of the bow. So you'll be able to do that. You're going to have pieces that cut like this. You'll need one long one and two shorter ones. 
And for that, you're actually going to have a total of four different pieces to choose from to decorate that. And that's going to be a decorative piece when we're almost done with the bobble. And what I did is I cut them all in the same style. They happen to be the one here with a little star. So you'll end up cutting that one panel five times, or as I said, if you want to choose from the other ones, then you can mix and match to your heart's content. Uh, another thing available is the holly and berries. So here you can see I've cut them out in red, I've cut them out in gold, because you can use these to decorate as you like, doesn't matter. And there's these gorgeous large swirls. So the other, the kit set came with a swirl, but it was smaller than this one. And uh, this one's substantially larger than that, but it makes sense because the bobble's larger. Then this one came with this greenery here. You can use this for so many things, but how darling is that? I happen to love pine trees. I have some in my yard and I just love, love, love that greenery. I think it's so gorgeous. Speaking of greenery, you're also going to have these pieces that you can cut out. These are stunning. You can use these year round, really. It doesn't matter, but there's two different styles. So let me show you those that you can use. How sweet are those? And then of course you can use Nouveau drops on that if you want to. Then you're going to have a die that cuts out a pine cone. Now it is a die with both a shadow and then it comes with a little verso die that you can use to cut into that paper. So those are the two versions. Of course you can do it in any color you like. I just happen to do it in gold. Then there's also this piece here. This is gonna be for the top of your bobble. So one of the dies is going to cut a slit into the center. It's going to allow you to put that little piece there that you're going to use to hang the bauble when you're all done or the ornament. So that's what that little oval is for that goes in conjunction with that and this piece here. And what I've done is I've cut that uh, hexagon portion twice. I want mine to be nice and sturdy, so we'll get to that. But there's also a little closure tab in the event that you want to close your bobble with a ribbon because you can make it so that it opens and closes. If not, you can definitely just adhere it solid so that it doesn't open. But if you do want it to open as a box, then you're going to need a hinge. That's what this is for. Simple little hinge there. And I think I've covered just about everything. Um, there's a tag, by the way. This is another unique little piece that comes with the set. And there is the shadow and then the sentiment that I did cut out in gold says Merry Christmas. I love it. And if you want to line the inside of your bobble, you can certainly go ahead and cut out more pieces of paper. That's what I've done here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and get started. But first, let's take a peek at how these pieces are going to go together. So as I had mentioned, you're going to be using eight of these pieces. Now, what you'll do is that four of them are going to create your lid, and then four of them are going to create your bottom portion. So you're going to follow that hexagon all the way around like so. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay. And basically that's how they would stack one right on top of the other. So all four of these pieces are going to form the lid. Then you'll be repeating the same type of construction for the bottom. So for this particular video, I'm only going to construct one half of the bobble with you. Then I'm going to show you the finished bottom piece and then we'll put it all together. So starting here, let's go ahead and start giving this a little bit of shape. I just start curling this paper a bit with my bone folder. And then that way this kind of gets used to that bend. But there are some fold lines here. There are some at the bottom. Okay. And then you'll see that little tab there. The same here. And then another tab here. So if you want to, you can get all of your papers folded first. I'll just go ahead and fold these away from me. All right. 
get all of your pieces folded and then we'll get started. Now all I have to do is of course start folding the little tabs on the side and I've mentioned this in a previous video and whenever you see a rounded tab on a Tonic Studios die cut piece that rounded tab is indicating to you that you do need a curve in your paper okay so that's kind of a little bit of a hint to give you there they do come together quite easily however so it's great to get yourself started with all of the little tabs facing away from you first then we can start the assembly so what i'm going to do is just place a small amount of adhesive on that little hexagon and this is going to help me of course get everything situated here now you pick whichever paper you want of course but what i'm going to do is make sure that my next triangle shape is right next to the previous one that way keep myself nice and organized as I'm creating this and also it allows for the paper to adhere nicely without shifting okay and I'm gonna keep adding adhesive here and I love the way that they designed this one it's a really wonderful design nice and sturdy so the third piece goes right on top and don't forget, you'll be repeating this for the second portion of this as well. Okay, so that's the last one right on top. And because all of the other ones are nice and straight, then it's going to be super easy for this one to just follow along. Kind of nestles right in its place. And I love that then there's four pieces of paper kind of reinforcing that. It's a lot of fun. Okay, what I've decided to do is that for my panels, I am actually going to alternate how I decorate them, okay? I'm going to go ahead and start curving this paper as well. All right, so I've got my shiny mirror card there. I'm going to follow that shiny mirror card panel with one that has the glitter card, and this is just very uh, subtle glitter but it'll match that simple edge one and then I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around so I'm just going to get my little panels ready here and as you see I'm burnishing them and I'm purposely going to burnish the ones that have that mirror card together with the solid panels that I'm going to be applying to my paper and that's just a way for me to make sure that I don't damage that beautiful uh, intricate portion of that paper it just makes it a little bit easier for me to burnish them together it's just a personal choice I'm going to go ahead and start adhering these by placing my adhesive just on the edge of that mirror card and then right on top of that decorative panel. I'm going to hold it just like so as it dries, making sure it makes full contact, but also making sure that I keep that curve in the paper. And it's just a matter of holding it for about three seconds, maybe five. Okay. Then I'm going to follow that with the paper. And I'm going to make sure that I have these nice and centered. Now, you may choose to do this once all of your edges are adhered. I find it a little bit easier for me to center the panel if I adhere it before I complete the assembly. Don't forget that you can also use your Nubo Drops to go ahead and decorate any one of those little openings that you see on these little panels. It's a lot of fun to do so. Or, of course, if you're being brave, you can run the same die through a different color paper 
and then fill it in with the pieces of cardstock. That way you can do some paper piecing. That's going to give you a really amazing result. And that, again, is just to add a bit more contrast in whatever you're making. And of course, if you've used your sprays or your mousse, uh, any kind of embossing, embellishment, I'm sorry, mousse, or even, yeah, heat embossing, if you want to do that, that can give you, again, another type of result. It's really personal preference as to how elaborate you make these pieces. And if you're not into the elaborate edges and all of that, you can just use the solid pieces alone. There's nothing wrong with using that. Sometimes the paper is so beautiful that it speaks for itself and you don't want all of those different types of decorations on it so you can do that as well. I am curving this as I apply it onto the base. I'm gonna move on with the next one. Making sure that I have the correct little partner here. During the week of November, um, I believe today's the 13th, then you can use the code PAPER20 to receive 20% off of any of the Tonic Studios Craft Perfect products. And Craft Perfect would include any of their papers as well as their adhesives. So if that's something you need to stock up on, there are some wonderful bundles and you can definitely use your tonic craft kit code alongside that and get a total of 30% off of all of your craft perfect items at the moment. So I think that's a fantastic deal, especially when you consider the variety of papers that tonic studios has. They not only have the classic card, which is what's wonderful for the foundation of any cards or 3D items, but as you can see, they have mirror card. They also offer satin card, and that has a bit of this type of finish here, which is still with a bit of sheen, but more polished. And they have, they offer vellum, they have specialty card, and that's a little bit pricier, but it's handmade paper that will have some absolutely fantastic finishes. So if you've not used any of the specialty card from Tonic Studios, I highly recommend you get, even if it's just one pack to try it out, I think that you will be very, very satisfied. You'll notice, however, that those contain about five papers per pack instead of the uh, regular 10. And that's again because of the quality of the of the paper. Um, they're substantially thicker, and they're going to have some really unique uh, qualities to them. And they do come in different colors. And then they do have glitter card. So of course, who doesn't love a glitter card? And that also comes in different colors. And if you like to try that sort of thing, but you're the type of person that says, no, I want to try before I buy, that's where the Tonic Craft Kit is always a great idea. It's really, really a great bargain considering that you get to try out the specialty card along with the classic card. And then, of course, you get the exclusive dies and stamps. So you may want to take a peek at that option as well. Okay. That's how easy it is to place the panels on here, as you can tell. That didn't really take a very long amount of time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place adhesive on the smooth edge of this bobble. And then I'm going to work my way down, making sure that my little tabs are all facing in, of course. But I'm going to start at the top. I'm just going to hold my paper like this and making sure that those little tabs are touching that adhesive. All I do is just press down on it like that. So I've got my thumb on the bottom on the little tab and then I work my way down. Next little tab, making sure that that edge is meeting exactly on the edge of the next piece of paper. 
again the next little tab and as soon as that paper makes contact and I know that it's not wiggling around it takes about three seconds or so I move on to the next tab and you're go going to notice that there's a little rectangular tab here at the bottom you want that underneath the previous piece of card so just make sure that when you meet the bottom that you don't allow this to separate and that that little tab is facing the inside. Okay. I'm gonna move on to the next one. I'm gonna work clockwise in my case. Oopsie. So again, I feel more comfortable putting the adhesive on this edge and then kind of pulling the little tabs toward it, but that's a personal preference. So again, I'm just pressing. And always remember the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive dries clear. So if you get a tiny little bit of adhesive that pops up when you're doing your crafting, don't worry too much about it. Don't fuss with it. Just let it dry and depending on the type of paper that you're using nine times out of ten you're not even going to see it once it's dry of course if it gets onto your mirror card then that's a different story you want to make sure it's nice and clean but if it's the classic card or really porous card then chances are you're in the clear no pun intended so i'm gonna keep going here and you don't need much, so you can definitely use your needle nose tip for your adhesive on this one. I happen to have one here, but I just was using that other bottle. So again, just pressing. I'm halfway there, so I'm going to continue on and I'll be right back once I have everything adhered. For the inside of the bauble, I am going to, just for decorative purposes in this instance, place another one of the little octagons. This is what's meant to go on the top of the bauble, but I'm using it, again, just to decorate. So I cut it out in gold mirror card and placed it right in the center. And what I will be doing with both the top and bottom is that I have taken the same dies that I used to layer the decorative portions on the outside of the bobble, and I've used the same ones to cut out the striped paper. It happens to coordinate with the other ones that I had used, and this is going to decorate the inside of this piece. And what I want to reiterate here is that if you're going to use your bone folder as I'm doing here or anything else to make sure that that paper tacks on to the inside that you not press very hard all I do is that I use it to hold the paper in place not to burnish it in this instance so if you're seeing that I'm just pushing onto the paper but I'm not necessarily shaping it so that way I don't ruin the work that I did on the outside of the bobble by changing the shape of it. So here what I'm, I'm going to do is now adhere the small little tabs. They are rectangular in shape. This is going to bring the entire perimeter of this together and what I'll do is make sure that every single one of those it goes all the way around. All of those need to be adhered. And once that's complete, and of course I shortened the video on purpose so that it wouldn't take too long. Now I'm going to take every single one of these little tabs that folds in. And what I will do is very carefully place one of the hexagons right inside of the bobble and fold those tabs onto it, making sure that I adhere those perfectly. And I'm paying extra attention to the little corners of all of those little angles and that's because I want to maintain the shape. This is a narrow octagon and you want to make sure that they, it meets the very edge of that 
box lid that you have just created. So I am taking my time. This is not a part in which you want to rush because this is what's going to allow you to have a very precise finish to this 3D make and it's going to reinforce it as well. So whenever you have a box that you're creating, if it has angles, that's where you really wanna pay extra close attention when you are adhering the papers together and then that way you don't have one side that leans toward um, one angle and the other one leans too far the other way, etc. So I think you catch my drift. So here's the other part of this. I had already completed it. And of course now I need a little hinge. So I'm going to place this on one end and you may have noticed that on the opposite end of where I place that little hinge is where I have my first magnet. So here I'm placing the second hexagon right on top of where I had adhered the half portion of the hinge and also the little magnet. This is going to hide all of this and give it a nice clean edge. So of course you can decorate this by either using a different color paper or using your embellishment mousse, however you like. I just went ahead and cut it out of the same red card and I'm making sure again that this meets the very edge of this box so that way I have a nice clean finish and paying attention to those little corners of course. I just burnish that little hinge a very tiny bit and now I'm going to make sure that I kind of measure out how this is going to go match up to the other half of this and I can now add the adhesive to the remaining portion of the hinge. I'll place my magnet matching the first one with a little bit of glue on top and this is going to help me also know the placement of that magnet onto the matching lid there. So I'm just giving this a little press here, not too hard because again, I don't want to compromise the shape after all that hard work. Now I can open this, take the magnet. Now I know exactly where to place it. And of course, I'm going to be able to cover up that second magnet the same way that I did the previous one and have this with a really pretty clean finish. By the way, if you're not a fan of magnets or simply cannot get your hands on them, don't worry, there is a, a piece that you can cut out using this die set that's going to allow you to create a ribbon closure. It simply looks like a little circle with a hole in it and you can adhere those the same way that I did the magnets and go ahead and close it with a ribbon. Now to hang this bobble, you can use the oval portion of this die set. You can cut that out twice. I happen to use the green mirror card that you see here. So you adhere those back to back and making sure that this is nice and tacky. The bottom portion of it, just go ahead and fold that open. So that's the finished look. And that's going to feed right into that hexagon, or I'm sorry, octagon, <laughs> that has the slit in the center. And what I did was that I adhered it onto the glitter card that I was using, but I wanted to make sure that I reinforce this. I highly recommend you cut it out twice. That's what you see on the table is another octagon and 110 pound cardstock that I had cut. This is simply to reinforce that top piece. So once these two come together, I can continue building this, but I wanted to make sure that I continued with that look of that glitter card. So that this little strip here that you can cut out using the die set, I ended up cutting out twice. Once with that 110 pound card that you see me assembling here and I'm simply matching the edge to that octagon with every single one of those little tabs. So of course there's a total of eight little tabs to match the edge, but I wanted to make sure that I continued with the same look so the second little strip, I simply cut down. I took away the tabs from it and I'll end up wrapping that around the piece that you see me adhering here. So I'm just gonna go edge by edge. Again, this is another process that you don't want to rush so that you can get the angles correct on this. 
and by the end you're going to see how cute it looks it ends up looking exactly like a real christmas ornament and that final little tab that you see there is going to tuck right in behind the initial piece of card that you adhered onto that little octagon so if you see there it tucks right behind there that's the final result looks like a little bottle cap and all of those little tabs are now going to fold in you can apply a generous amount of adhesive here on the top if you want to supplement that with hot glue by all means you can definitely do that and then here's what I meant about that other little strip. I had cut it previously with that glitter card. So I'm just going to wrap this right around that little top portion. And it's going to help me finish decorating this. That way it matches everything that I had already done. And I don't lose that look. Now you're going to notice in the set of dies, this little strip portion that you can cut out with two other small rectangles. They are actually gonna form one long strip and then you have a choice of different panels that you can adhere right on top. As you see, I selected the one with the little stars. So that's just meant to decorate the edge of your bobble, but this is really neat because once you adhere these end to end, and I am using hot glue here only because this is glitter card, so it would not adhere with the other type of adhesive. But now what you're going to see is how this comes together. This simply hides that magnetic closure and it also gives this a really pretty finish, but it doesn't wrap entirely around the bobble because if you did that, you would have trouble opening and closing this. So if you intend on using this only for decorative purposes and will not be using it as a box, by all means, you can wrap this all the way around It'll give it a beautiful finish and it actually will help you hide the seam as well. Now moving on, you can also use the little bow that came in this set. It is absolutely adorable and this is a double bow. So you see the other pieces on the table and this is where I'm just adhering the little decorative panels that you can place on top if you choose to. This folds over onto itself and just with a little drop of adhesive, you can close the loops of the bow. And then you're going to overlap both of these by matching the little portion in the center. It just goes right on top of the other. And then finally, there's the little rectangle that's gonna go right on top. I cut it out of mirror card. It'll wrap right around those two pieces of card and finally, the little tails can go right on the back. What I did was that I used a two millimeter piece of dimensional foam, placed it onto the front of the bobble, and with hot glue, I added that little bow. I also added some greenery. And finally, I did decorate it with one of the little pine cones that I had adhered with the gold mirror card and more of that smaller greenery available in the set this has been so much fun to put together. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. As you see here, I just finished decorating this. At the end of the video, you'll see more pictures. Let me know what you think of this tutorial. And sadly, by the end of this video, you'll find out that this bobble has already sold out in the US. I'm hoping it's still available in the UK. The star is still available, so if you're interested in that, be sure to run over and pick it up today. And I hope that you can be inspired and be blessed. And I thank you so much for being here.